You may recall recently that we took a little look at this box set, Sturginium Skies from Dystopian Wars by War Cradle Studios. And as well as being excited about the amount of contents in the box and the very different type of war game that it represents compared to what I usually play, one of the things that I really loved about it was indeed the box art and the general artwork surrounding the game. A quick look through the website reveals a ton more really sweet artwork and this game got me inspired and so I decided very quickly that I wanted to get straight on going from that initial product review to painting a piece for it. So here in my hand I have a Stark Imperium Sky Fortress. I'm trying to remember names of new miniatures is always fun. And this was the biggest and most striking model from the box. And I was really very, very impressed with the quality of the sculpt. It was a little bit tricky to put together, but I think that was more my fault than the sculpt's fault. But this model was indeed the perfect target to get started on painting this box set. And so that's exactly what we're going to do today. Let's go to Downcam and talk about how we did it. Okay, so making a start, we are here now on downcam, and you'll see I've got a black primed model. I've primed this with an airbrush, you could prime it with a rattle can, it makes very little difference. But the first thing we're going to do is spray a copper coloured paint all over our lovely airship. Now I'm using Viejo Hammered Copper here through the airbrush, but a little can of something like Tamiya PS14 would work great if you don't have an airbrush. And you can get PS14 along with other Tamiya Mini Rattle Cans from Wayland Games, who you'll find linked below the video. And I am an affiliate of Wayland Games, so every time you click that link and shop with them, you help the channel. Next, with the copper done, we'll attack all the panels on the model with Viejo model colour Intermediate Blue, which is actually a grey. This is a really good two thin coats kind of paint, covering evenly and flatly with minimal drama. It's a really, really nice one and I recommend it highly. And after this stage, if you have any mistakes, now is indeed the time to neaten those up. Another point to consider here is that you could also totally reverse the last two processes, spraying the grey with an airbrush or a rattle can and then brushing the copper. But personally, I think the way I did it requires a little bit less brush control. So to me, it's a bit faster, which therefore means it's a bit easier. But either way would work absolutely fine. Next, we're gonna give the Mini an all over shade with equal parts of black and brown inks and then about twice as much again of whatever your favorite thinning medium is. On this occasion, I'm using Lamian Medium by Citadel, but my favorite medium changes on a monthly basis. After mixing this together, we apply it to literally every single part of the miniature and then we let it completely dry, which is gonna take quite a while. So this will be a good time to maybe start first couple of stages on some of your other models. And with that wash dry, you'll notice we have a very textured and dirty looking surface. This is intentional, that's why we've used this all over black brown wash. And it's a product of my intention to make this ship look battle worn. We'll continue this approach now as we add textural highlights to the greys with our original base color intermediate blue and some white mixes, just using dotty dashy lines and not really being too precise. The one thing to bear in mind with this though is that as you build up those mixes of white, you do want to be shrinking those textural highlights so that although they are adding texture, they do also give the impression that they're adding lighting. Next up, very simple process. We'll paint out the Imperium symbols all over the airship in black. Uh, this case, I'm using pure black from Reaper Master Series paints. You could also use any other black paint. And then just by mixing a little white and black together, because I want a neutral gray, not a blue gray, uh, we'll just do a quick wet blend toward the top of each symbol. I'm not doing a really strong wet blend here, so it really is very, very simple. It's pretty hard to make a mistake because the two colors are quite close together anyway. But obviously with a wet blend, if you do make a mistake, just paint it out black and go again. It's very, very easy. And then once the cross part is done, the little background trim on the main one needs just some off-white. And uh, we can also spruce up the logos themselves with a few scratches and dings like are on the rest of the piece. 
And then here's a quick update of how things are looking at this point. And the reason I'm choosing this point to show you is because we're now going to start moving into the final stages of this scheme where the stuff that we do next is going to make pretty big, strong differences to the overall look. And there may be stages here that you decide you want to leave out when you recreate this yourself. So the next thing I want to do, and this one is pretty essential, is to pick out gun turrets and any other silver details with Vallejo Metal Color Airbrush Colors Dark Aluminium. Yes, that is a mouthful, but that really is what it's called. And everything that we've painted in dark aluminium will also need a shade. In this case, I'm just using some thin down black ink from Vallejo. And now this is the first section where we're gonna get a bit spicy. First, I'll use thin down blue green from Vallejo Model Color, and then a mixture of blue green and white to make this really nice electrical effect around the coils. Then I'll take some thin down brown ink and start to do some really heavy griming here and there. Some nice little streaks off the tip of the brush and some big patches of filthiness. We can also reinforce that with some thin down Viejo rust, that's the colour, not the effect, in order to brighten it up here and there. And I'll finish off the effects by using thinned down Viejo model colour emerald as a verdigris wash. To apply this, we're just going to thin it down with a bunch of water and then push it into any areas where we think verdigris would gather. You can be pretty liberal with it because it is very transparent when it isn't pulled up. It's only where it really pulls that you get a solid green look to it. And the base is very simple and straightforward. It's painted in in medium blue and then dry brushed with white and the stem is painted black. And so with all of that, we now have a lovely finished airship, which I can put on the display shelf for the time being, but you know what hobbyists are like. It won't be long before some more friends start to join it and I'm already building more miniatures from the set. But for now, it looks nice on the shelf and I'm really glad that I did it. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content and please do consider checking out my affiliate links and my Patreon if you wish to support the channel further. Thanks so much for watching, folks. I will see you in the next one and bye-bye for now.